Hello everyone, 13 here. I'm joined by Tony, and tonight we're going to be playing a little Sun and Moon Prison. Hello, 13. How's it going? Doing pretty good. Uh, so this video might be a little bit slower than others. This is a prison deck, which means we're going to be sitting around and probably just chatting, not really doing anything super productive, just waiting for top deck draws. Uh, this deck's a little unique. It's not like the Tezzeret decks that can end up going off and grabbing like Thopter combo or tutoring up bridge. This deck actually tries to do things with like a turn one blood moon, a little bit more along the lines of free wind red. It's called sun and moon prison because we're playing with blood moon and Elspeth sun's champion is just a giant finisher. Don't you just love Elspeth sun's champion? Oh yeah. It takes me back to standard days when she was in standard playing some like abs and control and that was good times. Yeah, she's just a powerhouse. For six mana, she better win the game, and she absolutely does. She just puts out a million chump blockers. She can clear the board of anything bigger than that. Uh, awesomely, she comes in under Ensnaring Bridge, which is pretty much what the strategy is doing. And then her ultimate just makes all the tokens lethal. Like, the turn she ults is the turn you win. Yeah, I remember when she was first out, I'd like try to build this, like so many decks around her because she's just so powerful. Uh, and six mana is achievable in standard. Like I'd actually say Elspeth is a stronger finisher in standard than uh, Teferi is at the moment. Like the power level is just insane. It is pretty insane. I don't, I don't know if it compares to Teferi. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I think so. You're well, probably right. They even kind of went in similar decks. But uh, mm -hmm. the other thing that this deck is doing is we're going to be playing Chalice of the Void. Uh, right now, Chalice is not the best in modern, but when your opponent is on something that requires a lot of like one drops, it's going to do a lot of work. And Snaring Bridge is going to ensure that we're not getting hit. And then, unlike other decks, we're actually running Late Line of Sanctity main board because not only can that just win against like decks like Ad Nauseum, but it also just gives us such a hedge to like slow down the game plan of things like Burn and Discard and just does a lot of really fun things. Fun for us, not the opponent. <laughs> so yeah, like Chalice of the Void hits. Uh, you'd be surprised how many decks it hits. Like just with on one, like Burn, it's really good against. Like it's probably better on two with Burn, but um, also like Bogles and like John even. Like you hit a lot with it, so I, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, a lot of people are running like Braids and decks like Death oh, Shadow yeah. are playing Fish on the top end, and Hollow One's casting mm -hmm. Hollow One's for free. Dredge is bringing back things from the graveyard without even casting them. Like, it, the meta is just not right yeah. for Chalice of the Void at the moment, but it's still a very powerful card. Definitely, definitely. Like, a Braid made that card a lot worse, that's for sure. <clears throat> it's so and, popular. And then, this deck's also running a couple other finishers in addition to the Elspeth. Uh, we're playing a one of, a fun of, the Assembled Legion. Uh, this was also another standard all-star. Just running one, it's probably not the most ideal thing here, but again, it gets in underneath uh, Ensnaring Bridge. You draw your card for the turn, it gives you a 1-1 one, one creature with haste, equal the number of muster counters. Like, if left unchecked, that just goes insane. Chandra is a powerhouse, Johnny is also a powerhouse, and can also tap down their only land that isn't Blood Moon. He just does a lot of great things, and uh, these are the ways that we're going to win the game. Yeah, you honestly sold me on this deck when I saw Chandra, so that's the reason why I'm here. I love Chandra. She's my heart and soul. Yeah, uh, I actually have two of the Egyptian SDC Chandras and the one uh, Therese Nielsen there. I, I just love that card. I have a lot of special versions of it. She's just so good. Yeah, when I first saw that group spoiled, I like fell in love with it. I, like did, It also helped that pre-release I pulled the stamp foil, so I like, fell in love with it even more. Still have it in my binder. Probably won't ever get rid of it. Yeah, uh, four mana planeswalk worth four abilities, just a lot of flexible uses. It's just so good. Also a way for us to draw cards. But uh, we got queued up for our first match. Let's go ahead and cut on over to that. Let's do it. Alright, so opponent is on the play, and uh, we basically get to empty our hand here, start off with a ley line, and a turn one ensnaring bridge. So... Hopefully this is going to shut down what our prone's doing. They can't target us with spells or attack with creatures, so I'm down to keep it. Absolutely. I like it. Now, keep in mind, we are a Blood Moon deck. Uh, we like the fast line. It'll eventually turn into a mountain. We have to keep the plane, so the mountain's going to go away here. <laughs> Opponent's name is Bob Gone Wild, starting off on Wooded Foothills, kind of expecting Junt. This is looking a little bit more like Burn. Burn's going to be very sad when they can't attack or target us. Interesting. 
Is it burn? Isn't that uh, isn't that uh, the hollow oh, deck? Oh, uh, so this is actually probably closer to the Phoenix deck. Okay, I thought the hollow one deck was playing this one drop. I thought I could be one drop. So everybody's playing with the new Phoenix. I actually think this is a little bit more along the lines of the Phoenix deck. I was I was talking about the the creature. That creature I think was. Yeah, I know Burn doesn't like it as much because it doesn't have haste. <laughs> Opponent just tried to Boros charm us. <laughs> Guess we'll find out here. This probably could could be just some budget. Uh, this is actually probably a concession. Assuming the opponent knows what's good for them. They're only going to be able to attack in for one, and then they likely won't have anything here. I think it could be a, like a budget burn deck, I guess. Uh, I would imagine they're running wooded foothills if that were the case. That's fair. Yeah, I definitely think they're... Um, what do you call it? A hollow one? Yeah, the hollow one. Because uh, they are they are all uh, Mardu, aren't they? Aren't the hollow ones Mardu decks? Uh, I think they're a little bit closer to just Rakdos. Uh, by the way, so I do want to pull attention to the choice for Chalice on 2 here. I'm getting the read that they're Burn, especially with that Rainy Map Ruins. Uh, Burn has oh, a yeah, lot of definitely. 2 drops that I care about, and Eidolon is one of the few ways that they'd be able to get damage in, and that was my primary card of concern here. Uh, something along the yeah. lines of like a Boros Charm or a Tarka's Command might even matter, but... Yeah, I definitely think that's the read now with Ramanat Ruin. Definitely some sort of Burn deck. But jokes on that card, it's now a mountain. Oh, I didn't play the ritual. I meant to. I was pulling up the deck list for um, Hollow One. Nah, it's definitely not a Hollow One deck anymore. Ritual. So, Ritual's going to be countered. Oh, yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah. I was just saying Ritual was going to get countered and the Chalice for the same cost gets countered. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, then. We're fine. No big deal. Interesting. Hollow One isn't on uh, Goldfish's top list. Hmm. Must be not be not be being, being played right now, then. There is a lot of random chance in that deck. It has a lot of power to it, but it is a lot of random chance. Oh, yeah, definitely. Very random. I never was super worried about it. Like I, I, it's an interesting deck, but I just was. Whenever I play it, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's okay. It's just frustrating to play against. The Burning Inquiry can take away your answer. They can put down three Hollow ones on turn one, but for the most part, they stumble and can't do a whole lot. Yeah, it's very rare that they do play like that many on turn one. So this is gonna get countered, but I'm just running it out because I need to stay empty-handed so that the Soul Scar Mage can't attack. Yep, definitely. And then, uh, probably a lot I'm going to say a lot tonight, we're just looking for a Planeswalker. As soon as we get a Planeswalker, we're going to start interacting in a meaningful way that our opponent can't deal with. Yeah, or the, like you like you and I were talking about before, or the enchantments, Ample Siege, just to draw some extra cards. That was a pretty good draw, too. That it works. is? I can't cast it, which means I'm going to get hit here, but that's fine. Oh yeah, because we haven't drawn a land, huh? That's right. Which is the other reason why, like, Chandra and Elspeth are a little hard to cast, and Elspeth here would just rot in my hand. I don't have the double white. I don't have six mana. And they're probably going to start burning themselves. Nope, they are the Phoenix deck. So Mardu Phoenix deck, huh? Uh, I don't believe it's Mardu. I actually think this is just to fetch out a mountain or the Sacred Foundry. I'm assuming that they are a Boros version of the Mono Red Phoenix deck, which is basically just burn with the Phoenixes and Manamorphos jammed in it. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. Okay. Okay. 
All right, didn't spend a lot of time with this in the deck tech, but Assemble the Legion is actually a super fun card, and opponent's pausing to read it, so we'll go over it. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a muster counter on it, then create a 1-1 one, one red and white soldier token with haste for each muster counter on it. So next turn, I'm getting a 1-1 one, one with haste. The following turn, I'm getting 2, then 3, then 4. Eventually, it's just going to swarm the opponent. Yep. Lots and lots of fun. Definitely our fun of, not the most effective card that we could have in this deck, but it we get soldiers. And now we can cast Elspeth, so there's like no way we're gonna lose this game. Yeah, it definitely gets the it gets the job done, that's for sure. Like it'll take some time, but eventually it will win the game that the Assemble Legion. I love this card in EDH. <laughs> Especially if you can proliferate it and just get a ton of counters right off the bat. Start getting 10 and 11 tokens. EDH. We're talking to modern people. Who plays that? <laughs> Everybody should play modern. Or EDH. Like, if you like modern, you should go play EDH. Uh, we can't attack very profitably here. We'd get one damage in. I'd much prefer to wait until next turn and be able to attack in with six creatures, get four damage in. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And this is just going to get exponentially worse for these guys. Opponent's going to start discarding the hand size or just burning off the soldier tokens, and mm -hmm. we can see more of what they're doing. Yeah, I haven't been a fan of this card when I've seen it. I know a really? lot of people are Some playing with critics. it, but... I think it's good. I think you and I disagree. It's not a card we want right now, but that's okay. I'm okay to kill their blockers. We're going to get four attackers next turn. Yeah, I guess that's right. I guess it's Anger is going to kill five of my creatures and make it so that they can't attack, but mm -hmm. I think the upside's there. Yeah. They didn't, even, they didn't even choose the block, so... Joke's on them. Opponent might also be trying to figure out what else we're doing. Assemble the Legion seems like a very weird win condition on a prison deck. Mm -hmm. Wow, discarding seven cards. Oh, geez. Definitely Arclight Phoenix, Boros Charms. They did try to Boros Charm us on turn two there. Wondering what they think their out is. Red can't interact in a meaningful way. Do they have, like, main board a braid? I doubt it. I doubt it. If they did, they wouldn't be able to get 15 damage in by the time Assemble the Legion kills them at this point. They're pretty dead. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you have Chalice on two, so there's a Phoenix. Yeah, Braid wouldn't even get him out of it. This is a burn deck, though. They're running Lava Spikes, which means they're at least on Bolt. They're on Skewer the Critics, which means Rift Bolt might be the cut there. Jeez. It's possible that they had a mass control card, like, it's not likely. They could have also had Deflecting Palm, although that would have been killed by the Chalice. Take... We're bringing an idol on? What do you think? Uh, casting more than one spell each turn? I don't know. It would stop an early Phoenix, but if Phoenix is coming out before turn three, it's not really going to matter a whole lot. I do like Rest in Peace against the Phoenix deck. Yeah, that's a good point. I think Rest in Peace is probably better. Okay, so so far, looking at Dragon Claw, gain a life whenever a player casts a red spell. We have a good number of our own, plus we're going to gain life off theirs. They are a burn deck. Rest in Peace is going to stop um, Arclight Phoenix. Opponent also had Faithless Looting, uh, Bedlam Reveler. Bedlam Reveler is actually some pretty cool tech with Arclight Phoenix. The first iterations of the deck had that in there, and then a lot of people were moving away from it. Um... I don't know why exactly. Sure, I'm not sure why, but definitely a consideration. 
Okay, so opponent probably doesn't care about Blood Moon, and we saw a lot of them. That means the rituals aren't as good. There are considerations to cut. I I don't think... You think cutting all four Blood Moons is dry? They're basically Mono Red Burn with Boros Charm, and I think that was the only white card they showed us. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. Yeah, that's right. I was just... just, just thinking about it what other ones do you think we should cut i'm I mean, kind of looking really... at the three pyretics you can't splice them we don't care about an early blood moon the anger of the gods on turn two might be all right but simian spirit guide is just better really? spyglass is a consideration i think i'd rather have yeah. the faster mana yeah because you can always like uh, put out a Chandra early or something like that. Yeah, and Spyglass is going to name a fetch land out of their deck, so that's probably correct, and then just cut a Ritual because we don't necessarily mm -hmm. need it. Yeah. Alright. More O-rings in the side would be nice to get rid of the Phoenixes. It's slow, but... I think I'd prefer an Anger of the Gods. It's easier to cast under a Blood Moon. I, I understand we don't have Blood Moon in for this exact matchup, but yeah. it's easier to cast under Blood Moon. You can Ritual into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also kind of like this hand. They showed us a lot of burn spells that targeted us directly. Make it set. Their graveyard doesn't matter. O-Ring for whatever actually comes out, and then a Chandra to build up to. Yeah, this is a snap keep. I don't like that this isn't a planes, but you have to make some concessions. Opponent's mulling to five. It doesn't matter. We don't have blood in the deck, so... Oh, good yeah. point. You're correct. Yeah. That's a bad draw. Yeah, it happens. That's what you get when you're playing Leyline. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just hard to cast. We don't have the additional white source for it, so... You mean you will eventually. Sure. I'm okay with Rip here. Just gets a card out of our hand in case we see a bridge and makes it so that any other Phoenix shenanigans are gone. Bedlam Reveler is going to be full cost. Definitely. Rip is the play there. The play there. Alright, is O Ring on Swift Spear worth it? Alternatively, we'd be Chandra in it. Chandra's probably going to die to any burn spells they have. They're on three. I think I'd prefer to keep my life total high and just go for the O Ring. Yeah, I think O Ring's right. It's either O Ring or Bridge, but I don't think we're going to get cards out of our hand anytime soon. Bridge isn't going to do anything, and it's just going to sit on the table for them to destroy. Yeah, it's not It's not the right time for Bridge yet. Uh, of note, Randy Map Ruins hits each opponent, doesn't target us. That's good to know. Okay, so I know I'm playing Chandra here. The question is, am I playing Chandra, adding for mana, ritualing out, ensnaring bridge? Yeah, I, I don't see that. Why not? Yeah, they It'd stop that. a Phoenix coming down and hitting Chandra. I feel like that's most correct here. Yeah, I think so. And the reason that's relevant is their turn four land was a tap land. Mm-hmm. Any burn Maybe spells they have turn. are going to Chandra, though. And it gets cards out of our hands, and we can play Leyline next turn, too, so we only have one card in our hand, depending on what that card is. Alright, so uh, I can run Chandra out for mana. I don't believe that's correct. I'd like to see a Planeswalker off that. Nope, didn't get one. So it's probably correct just to get the Leyline out. Yeah, just get the Leyline out of our hand. How's the delay, by the way? Is it nearly as bad as it was before? Oh, not at all. Like, it's like, you finish your sentence, and it happens. You know what I mean? It's not bad at all. How much hate do you think the they brought in for Blood Moon? <laughs> Probably none. For Blood Moon, none. I could see Disenchant, Wear Tear... Um... Not smash the smithereens. That's probably a little bit. Yep, there's the braid. 
The upgrade, yeah. All right, so 100% cash in Chandra here. That's just game. Uh, I'm gonna outpost siege because this leaves us a little bit more options here. But opponent's dead next turn. Oh yeah, definitely. So outpost siege gives us two options. We're pretty much always choosing cons, allowing us to cast the top card of our library for the turn on our upkeep. So we just see one more card in while not putting that card into our hand, giving us a little more flexibility under the bridge. Jeez, I wonder if opponent had to have kept. They don't have lands. And they're dead. So, power of prison right there. Opponent couldn't target us because of Leyline of Sanctity. They couldn't attack in because of the ensnaring bridge that they had. They couldn't go on the Phoenix plan because of Rest in Peace. Yeah, just a lot of really powerful cards that do one thing very specifically well, and we have the opportunity to see a lot of them at one time. Definitely, that was a pretty easy matchup, I felt like, with the Mono Red. Like, we had all the answers to all their game plans. And, like... Bridge is a really powerful card against them. Yeah, when they're just trying to get in all the damage that they can and we're preventing damage on multiple axes, like, we had a pretty good draw, but we did what we wanted to. And they only have, like, they only have, like, they don't have any main board answers to, like, Bridge, and they don't have very many sideboard answers, like, like you said, wear and tear and upgrade, but, I mean, that's not not a ton. You I mean they probably play three or four at the most between the two of those types of cards. If they were stock burn and they actually had the splash green, uh, not all stock burn splashes green, but a good number of them do, they could end up having the destructive revelries on the side, which are just a little bit more yeah. flexible. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, what's that card called? Smash of Smithereens. I don't know why I keep blinking on that one. Yeah. Yeah, that that's definitely a card. I don't. It's not super common unless you're like a mono red deck. Um, but yeah, uh, I think the green lists also are a little bit more zooey. I think the ones that typically go green go for Wild Nicotle, possibly Curd Ape. Uh, definitely want the Atarkas command so that they can hit for three. Mm -hmm. And I bet you they have a lot of the white sideboard cards in the deck they were playing. That's probably why they have the white in the deck. Is so yeah. you can sideboard into the graveyard hate against other people against other graveyard strategies. Again, after seeing what our opponent was on, like they were off meta. Like they were the mono red Phoenix deck, which is already kind of a budget deck, and they were adding white for the sideboard hate more than likely, and the sideboard hate of choice would probably be ripped there, and that hurts their main game plan. Exactly. I agree with all of that. All right, well, we got our game two, so let's go ahead and pop on in. Uh, we will take the play. Oddly enough, we have three of the gemstone caverns, but and we're still better off on the play. And, of course, we find one. <laughs> I'm sorry. This hand is a little awkward, but we can empty it pretty early and get it out of bridge, hope that this is a creature matchup. If not, we have the spyglass, so I'm going to keep it. Yeah, I think this is very much keep. The problem is that the clifftop retreat comes in untapped. Sorry, sorry, tapped. Tap, tap, tapped. Yeah. Uh, so I'm starting yeah. on that because we don't have a turn one play. Yeah, there was not exactly what I was just going to say. There's like, we don't have anything to do to one anyway, so it's not super, super relevant. Interesting. So this is probably the new pod deck. Or the new elves deck? Or just elves? Could it just be elves? Off of a oh, breeding pool? Mm, yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of inclined to go for Chalice here. I also wouldn't be completely opposed to go for Chalice. Um, actually, I can do both, oh, I can can't I? I can do both. Can you do both? Yeah, so if I play Inspiring Vantage, Ritual into Ritual... Oh, that yeah. should be four mana, and then that'll let me spyglass, see what's up, and then chalice if I need to. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure this is elves. I'm pretty sure. This is, they're probably trying to do, like, uh, 
the modern version of Glimpse of Nature. What's that called? Uh, uh, Beast Whisper? No, it's like a there's like a blue green spell. It's a split card. Okay, so this is 100% the pod deck, and they do have the mana here. So I'm going to call Misty oh, yeah. Rainforest, and then they'll have to go Stomping Grounds, and then Chalice on One will stop there. Actually, do I just want to go for Vanafir here? I think that actually just wins the game, doesn't it? Or Kiki? I want Kiki. Uh, I don't know this deck, so I'm going to let you make that choice. I haven't seen the new pod decks yet. I understand how they work, but that would make sense. Yeah, I'm going to go for Kiki. I believe that's actually the right call. And then Chalice on one. Yeah. Chalice on one's going to be huge. Good good call on that line, playing both of those. So I described this in my last video, but I'm assuming that people are watching these as a standoff at this point. Prime Speaker Vanifair is the new birthing pod. So when she can untap, she gets to sacrifice another creature and search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost one greater than what you sacrifice. And the entire deck is built on the concept of untapping or Resto Angel flickering what comes into play. Renegade Rallyer will bring back the two drop that you killed off. And then they eventually go up for the Kiki Jiki combo for infinite uh, damage. And so the Spyglass is going to make it so that they can't activate Kiki Jiki here. And then the Ensnaring Bridge will make it so that they can only attack in with the Arbor Elf, and they should be locked out. They have Knight of Autumn, though, which is going to be a problem. I guess that was a reason to pick up the Prime Speaker, was that they couldn't tutor up the Knight of Autumn. Yeah, Renegade Rally is really good in that deck. Didn't think about that. Yeah, so the typical line is they sacrifice the Mana Dork, go get Scrib Ranger. Scrib Ranger, return a force to hand to untap Vanifair. And then Vanifair sacrifices a Scrib Ranger for Renegade Rallyer. Renegade Rallyer picks up Scrib Ranger. Scrib Ranger untaps Vanifair. Oh, they even have Acidic Slime. Oh boy, with Restoration Angel, this is going to be bad. Mm -hmm. cool. Who loves Acidic Slime? I love it. So, seeing as they have two Restoration Angels, I need to kill this Acidic Slime, and that's not going to be easy. I'm actually going to hold these two in hand. If I get Chandra, I can try to kill the Acidic Slime, assuming they tap for something. Mm -hmm. But this is looking like a loss. The main board Acidic Slime, I was not expecting. I figured they'd have Night of Autumn, but the odds of them just drawing into this is pretty painful. Good old slime ball. Cube all star. Play that card every single time. I love that card. Yeah, and then they're just gonna hold up their two restos for days, so this is looking bad. Or they're going after a land. They actually could have just hard drawn Kiki and gone for the spyglass here. Alright, so what's the correct play here? I believe getting out the ensnaring bridge is going to be correct. The line is they're going to use their second restoration angel to flicker the slime ball. They're going to have to kill ensnaring bridge. We get one mana in Chandra, and we can try to kill something that matters. We're currently looking at nine damage on the backswing, and then we're just dead. So ensnaring bridge... Actually, I think our line is just draw a land and then ensnaring bridge next turn. Yeah, this is it's a tough one. I think, like you said, it's probably the move here. But not. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I couldn't even Chandra here. Uh, yeah, that's actually just game, because they're going to resto and then kill the ensnaring bridge. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so let's go to the sideboard. 
I think we're going up to the four spy glasses. The spy glasses, they have a very gritty mana base, so we can name fetch lands if we see them. Uh, we also get a name Kikijiki and Vanifair, and there's just a ton of things that we want to do with that. Blood oh, Moon yeah. feels like GG's. Rest in peace. Rest, uh, in peace. rest in peace is only going to get the Renegade Rallier. Yeah, you're right. Hmm. Uh, if they end up going for Vanifair, the Dampening Sphere is not going to do anything. Uh, they had a pretty Resto heavy hand, so they could have interacted on our turn, but this would potentially cast multi-spelling. Uh, I think our game plan's all right. We just want to have a little bit more targeted action here. Turn one Blood Moon is just backbreaking. Yeah. Anger seems good. It kills just about everything but Seaver Exarch. I assume that just Ley Lines out. Yeah, the ley lines don't really do anything. All right, run it back. Hmm. Do I want to go for a more explosive hand? I, I don't think our opponent's going to be that strong, and we have a turn two chalice, turn three Chandra. Yeah, I think that's right. I think this hand's good. All right, let's give it a shot then. Seeing as this will come untapped next turn, I'm just going to lead on the mountain. Uh, we're a chalice deck. They don't necessarily... No, they do know that. They saw that game one. So they probably know that we don't have a bolt, but we can represent it. <laughs> Need to see those blood moons, man. Let's draw those blood moons. I'm assuming chalice is a better play here than the spyglass. Chalice on one hits all of their like in their they're like RS for doubling their manas, right? Yeah, that's gotta be correct. Hitting Chalice here and then we can Chandra and kill anything play. that they play we're concerned about. One of the things the Tezzeret version of the prison deck actually does have over this one is that they can just tutor up whatever hate piece they want. Mm -hmm. They don't get the stronger white hate pieces, but we kind of rely on top deck exiles to get to what we need to get to. So good. Renegade Rally. So good. Alright, so I kind of don't care about getting Chandra down this turn. I'm okay doing that next turn. I think I want to Spyglass and just check their hand. Yeah, it's a good idea. You can always do both this turn, but... Oh. Do I have enough for that? That's going to give me two mana? Oh, I can splice into Arcane. This mm -hmm. is one of the mechanics I'm not necessarily as good with. So I can cast that, splice it. That'll give me two mana, cast this, get six. So I can Chandra and Spyglass, can't I? Yep. So I believe the mechanic here is I cast this while holding control. Cast and splice additional spells, do that. Oh, no, I need one more mana. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I guess that resolves. That's unfortunate. So that would give me not enough. Oh, well, lessons were learned. <laughs> My bad. My bad. It's all good. So I think part of casting the spell is actually splicing it. So if I don't splice, shouldn't that take it back? Mm, it should... I don't know. I'll have to look that one up. I don't remember the rulings on Splice. So they have Glenalendra. That's probably the thing I'm most concerned with here. They have Maelstrom Pulse and Slime Ball. Yeah, this isn't great. So since almost all my win conditions and lock pieces are non-creature based, I'm going to get rid of Glenalendra here because she counters two and with Persist is just a pain in the ass. Mm-hmm.
Then we can ship it back. Opponent's going to windswept Heath, have five mana, hopefully Acidic Slime away the Spyglass. We can just run out Chandra. Yeah, I feel super behind in this one. Assuming they are on Slime Ball, I think Chandra's just ticking up. Although she'll just die to anything. As expected. Anger of the gods? Like, yeah, exactly. We need anger of the gods. <clears throat> That's not anger of the gods. Yeah, so floating a mana with ritual beforehand is not going to do anything. I think we're just on Chandra. Kill the acidic slime ball so they can't flicker it. Yeah, probably. Chandra's going to die, battle. but this gives us... Couple more things we could draw into. Glenelender's gonna be out though, which is countering our next two spells, so. Maelstrom Pulse also makes Chalice incredibly bad. Gonna have to Chalice for three. Mm hmm. Well, that's at least going to get the first counter off Glenelendra. <laughs> Play the ritual first. Uh oh. They just let the ritual go, expecting a non creature to counter. Okay, well, they must just assume they want to use Pulse on that. They also have Metamorphose to mana fix for it. Mm hmm. I mean, they have Metamorphose, and they have Birds of Paradise, and they have two basics. I mean, they're not super, super hurt. Yeah, this is looking bad. We're currently on a three turn clock and they can counter two spells, which means we have to draw a runner, runner, runner. Yep, this one's looking over. This deck is quite powerful. We didn't even see their tutor piece, and they're still making it just to grind attrition war. Oh yeah, definitely. The Grinnegan Rallyer is a very, very powerful card. Like that little bit of ramp was pulled them really far ahead. It's possible that I wasn't naming correct things with Sorcerer Spyglass. Uh, I could have gone after their mana base and just stumbled them a little bit, but maybe. Again, though, kind of coming back, Chalice isn't at its best here. I had a Chalice on one, both games in turn two, and it was just like, mm -hmm. well, okay, well, they already had a Mana Dork, and then Renegade Rallier comes down, Acidic Slime, Resto Angel, like, these are all cards that many decks would consider in Modern, and none of them are really getting hemorrhaged by the Chalice of the Void. Chalice is going to be better when things like Death Shadow are doing well, and Serum Visions, and Storm. So I think the... I don't even know. Like an early Blood Moon maybe is the way you win that matchup, but so maybe we should have mulliganed a little bit more aggressively. But I don't even know if that wins. Because if 
they have the birds, like a basic and birds. It's pretty tough to they can play off of that just fine. But I think that's our best chance. Yeah, I agree. Like I think we did everything we needed to there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Leyline will actually just steal a couple of wins here. We have a turn two chalice mm -hmm. or a turn two bridge. This is a keepable hand. Yeah, absolutely. This is a snap keep against an unknown opponent. One of the issues with this deck, though, are you can see, like, your good hands have rituals in them, and if you don't have a Blood Moon or something that you know is going to screw your opponent over, we don't really have any pressure to keep that going. Mm -hmm. I think Planes actually tells the least about what we're doing, so I'm going to start off on that. Yeah, definitely. Because you could be Bogles also. I could definitely be Bogles with this hand. I could be the uh, Enchantment Prison deck. All right, looks to be spirits, which means while they're tapped down, I'm definitely getting the bridge out. Or humans. Probably spirits, so. Humans does run a single island sometimes, but I would say this is more spirity. Mm hmm But either way, you want a bridge out. So. Yeah, I want the bridge out. An Aether Vial means a creature deck, and an Ensnaring Bridge means that creatures can't attack. Like, it just... Mm -hmm. Simple math at that point. Plus, we can empty our hand next turn. Mm -hmm. If it is humans, things like Kite Cell won't get through. If it's spirits, it won't be able to counter the bridge. Two islands basically puts them on spirits or merfolk. Probably merfolk, okay. especially Kevin, these are Zendikar Lance. Merfolk? Is that even a deck anymore? <laughs> it is. Uh, they were toying with the idea of doing blue-green for some of the new things, like Humana yeah. Speaker. Uh, the green wasn't worth the instability, from what I've heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the Coco was in it too, and like Coco is an amazing card, but the card, the deck was just wasn't powerful enough. I didn't feel at least. I mean, they do what humans and spirits want to do, but they have more lords and they're more reliant on a board state and they're harder to rebuild. Mm -hmm. They need to be... Like, the tempo game plan is way more powerful. It's just harder to play, I feel like. I kind of want to keep the ritual here just in case we draw a four drop under bridge. So I'm just going to run out mm -hmm. Chalice. I, if they flash in a one drop, like a curse catcher or something, I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. Almost decisively Merfolk now. Merfolk was running these as up to a three of back in twin oh, yeah. days. Definitely. definitely, definitely, definitely. You have the Anger of the Gods, it's going to be awesome. As long as it comes in under Lords. If they hard cast a Lord here, drop in a Lord, and then that'll be the only time that I can cast it. Mm -hmm. And with the Vial on one... Yeah, a Boro, definitely Merfolk. File on one means they can bring in a Curse Catcher. They can sacrifice it to counter a spell with converted mana cost one or less. Sorry, they have to pay one. Mm -hmm. Which makes me actually want to run out the Ritual. Ritual won't be counted by Curse Catcher. They won't have the Lord for it. This is a good play by opponent, though. Like, they don't necessarily know about our Anger of the Gods, but the fact that they put out creatures that replace themselves to kind of test the waters is a pretty good read. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to take the two for one. You know, no big deal. Oh, yeah, definitely. Our ensnaring bridge means that they don't really have a way around this. They're going to have to not play lords to come in under our bridge with a 1-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. And the only thing we won't be able to cast here right now is Elspeth. Elspeth. 
Ah, uh, it's been a while since I've seen me some tectonic edge. <laughs> and <Yeah>. peak? <laughs> This is like some old school builds. I mean, they have the new trickster, oh, but. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Alright, so I want this Blood Moon to resolve because that kind of means that they can't use their Tectonic Edge. They'll have to use it now. Uh, Spell Pierce would be able to get around Blood Moon and one. Curse Catcher could get around both together. Uh, I'm good to just empty my hand, though. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to, like, sacrifice multiple creatures to not have this go through. More than likely, they're going to tech edge one of our lands, and that's going to put us a little bit on the rough side. Oh, opponent, I think that might have been a mistake on your part. Of note, Spreading Seas on one of our lands will now make it an island, even if it's a mountain. So that is something to keep in mind. They're also probably going to go after our white source if they have one. But the fact that they literally have done zero damage to us so far means that we don't really care. We can keep like two or three cards in our hand. We can't cast for a while. I think they're trying to keep this trickster in case we play something. Um, do they run the miracle return all non lands to hand? No, I don't think so. Not the main deck, at least. I want to say for a little bit they had Aether Eyes on the sideboard, but that that feels like it's really old. Yeah, I don't think they are. And again, coming back to the catchphrase for the night, uh, we'd love to see a Planeswalker. <laughs> That's going to be the title of the video. We'd love to see a Planeswalker. Thank you again for hopping in to help chat about this a little bit. It does get a little painful when you're just sitting here by yourself. Like, I don't think Merfolk can win. They should just concede. <laughs> yeah, some, a symbol of the Legion would be good too. I mean, that'd be really good right now. Gonna run out Anger of the Gods here, keeps our hand empty, definitely gonna take a couple of their creatures, definitely takes Phantasmal Image, is less of a good card. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly the play pattern that you're buying into if you look at this deck, so that is something to keep in mind. I know a lot of people don't like playing against Prison, our opponent's probably just saying they're like, I hate this deck, when they should really be thinking, let's just scoop up and move on with their lives, I'm locked out. Yeah... People are stubborn like me. Yep. I mean, it's fun to play it out. I hold no bad bearings against opponent here. Um, if they have an out, they should at least know what it is, though. And I know a lot of players don't ever think about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're at like 99% chance of losing this game. <laughs> pretty sure I don't think I can't think of an out for them like unless there's some random blue card that I can't think of oh yeah definitely now with uh, Johnny well they could actually interact with the Johnny but um, so Johnny's text because not everybody knows modern staple a Johnny vengeant plus one target permanent doesn't untap during its controllers next untap step for this board state specifically note it doesn't actually tap it it just makes it so it doesn't untap then uh, his minus two is lightning helix and his minus seven is armageddon one-sided for the opponent so again not expecting this to do anything i probably should have gone after the two drop because they're more likely to have multiple two drops but they have multiple vials yeah uh it is possible that they have something along the lines of like um Clever Impersonator, the 4 mana clone that gets any non-permanent, so they actually might be able to clone a Johnny or something. Really? You think they're playing Clever? It's possible. But... It's possible. Uh, again, I'm yeah. like on the fringe of what they could possibly think their outs are mm -hmm. here. I'm about to Armageddon them. They have Aether Vials, but I mean, an active of Johnny and being locked out is... They don't have much to come back from this. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. 
They must have had a really heavy Aether Vial hand. It's interesting that they kept it. Uh, so they had at least one on turn one, and then they drew two. I know that the third one came a little bit later in the game, but... Yeah. Interesting. They could play Mero Regery and try to tap down our land so that we can't cast anything in hand, but they'd have to do a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Harbinger of Tides would return a creature to hand. Um, they don't have anything like... Spreading Seas. Possibly Kira would stop triggered abilities for the first time. But our opponent's even going to mill out first, like, even if we don't see our... They might be looking for our win condition. That is a possibility. Yeah. Lucky for us, we have more than, more than, more than one, so... Okay. But they're going very low on time with these Aether Vial triggers and trying to figure out what they're doing, so... You never want to win by timeout, but it is something the opponent needs mm -hmm. to keep in mind here. Yeah, they just need to say, always know. Always know. Keep it at what they're at right now. Called that. <laughs> Spreading seas. It's alright, we have two white already. We run a grand total of six planes, so if we do happen to see an Elspeth or something along those lines... Uh, we will eventually kill the opponent here. I'm just going to get rid of the Merfolk Trickster. Destroying their lands won't do a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Hi, Hulk. Roommate's dog came to visit. Good old Hulky Boo. Such a good dog. Is Ian in there yelling at the Jazz game? Is that why he came and visited me? He always gets so nervous when Ian gets upset. <laughs> I kind of want to top, de top deck a uh, Sorcerer Spyglass to name Aether Vile and then destroy their lands. <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. So good. Hello, Lord. So again, he doesn't tap anything, but he does prevent it from untapping, so I'm just going to grab one of their lands there. Uh, opponent, interestingly enough, has decided not to tap an Aether Vial and put down the Lord Instant Speed, which makes me think they have two two drops in hand. Mm -hmm. Simeon Spirit Guide being the best uh, two two for three the world could ask for. He's going to block, assuming anything happens, which I don't believe anything can happen. Absolutely. Best win condition in any deck. Simeon Spirit Guide. You know things aren't going quite right whenever you cast this guy, but he's such a pretty little ape. He shouldn't have to spend all of his time in exile. So, I actually kind of want to leave the Lord out because he does actually buff all the other merfolk mm -hmm. so that they won't be able to attack in under the bridge assuming that they do spreading seas in other planes and we draw both Elspeths and have two cards in hand. Uh, it's also of note that a Johnny going up to seven is relevant because of the Sorcerer Spyglass so kind of just going to let him go up. There's no reason to deal with this Lord as it's standing. Yeah, he's totally fine out there. And Assemble is a beautiful card and a fun of and so there's kind of a joke about Nickfit and Legacy where it's like, what kind of garbage can I place in my deck and still have fun with it? And that's kind of what this is doing. Do you want a Johnny Vengeant? Yeah, he's all right. Do you really want Elspeth? She's a fantastic card, but costs a lot. Do you want to run Assemble the Legion? Yeah, I, I personally want to run Assemble the Legion. <laughs> oh, side note. Spirit, spirit guy cannot block because of spreading seas. Because it'll most likely have Island Walk, right? You'd have to give him the Island Walk effect. He only gives it to other merfolks. Oh, yeah. So that would mean that it's a 3-3. So now he's a 3-3 and Simeon Spirit Guide can't block, but there's no way that's happening. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, a John Deep Vengeant is actually doing something here. Uh, muster counter, I can attack in. There's no point yet. Gonna go ahead and play our redundant ensnaring bridge, and our opponent should really start feeling dead. 
Oh, I haven't been updating our record at all. We are overall one and one. We beat uh, Boros Phoenix and we lost to the new pod deck. Mm -hmm. Weird pod deck. Now he's playing creatures for some weird reason. He knows he has to block. But Assemble the Legion is exponentially bigger. Yep. Copy the spear guide. Copy the spear guide. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Dang it. Alright, so, Phantasmal Image. Whenever it's the target of a spell or ability, you have to sacrifice it. He ran that out into a Johnny who is looking to get upticked. Probably not his best play there, but I'm still a pretty firm believer opponent should have died a while ago. Should have scooped a while ago. Mm hmm. Here we go. Doing the good things. Who doesn't like Assemble the Legion? Oh, opponent could have an Echoing Truth. Yeah, that's right. Echoing Truth is a card. They normally don't have that until it's in the sideboard. Alright, so what do we actually care about here? Uh, I think we just want to get to our ensnaring bridges. So... Mm -hmm. Sorcerer's Spyglass is an interesting name for Aether Vial, but you never want to board in for Aether Vial. Stony Silence is probably just better for that exact reason. Mm -hmm. I kind of like this the way it is. Uh, Leyline could probably come out for Spyglass. Stony Silence. Stony Silence. This at least lets me see their hand. Yeah, it diversifies your threat also, though. It's not like they're going to be running meddling mages or anything. Plus, this is colorless. Sure. This is going to require a basic planes if I blood moon. I agree. Alternatively, yeah, I could right. just bring in dragon's claws to gain a little bit of life. But when they attack in, they're going to have several lords through it in snaring bridge. So, I don't mm -hmm. think this life exactly. gain is relevant. No, I don't think so either. So, nothing particularly helpful in the sideboard to note of. Uh, Merfolk has also been kind of a dead matchup. When I was trying to figure out what they were doing, I googled Merfolk Modern, and uh, Channel Fireball was last from May 2017. Mm -hmm. MTG Goldfish did uh, the budget green-blue version back in September of 2008, but like Merfolk hasn't really gone anywhere. It just hasn't been putting up results because it's a worse version of humans and spirits. 2018, right? Uh, eight. Correct, 2018. All right. Playing first. Oh, well, maybe. Maybe they're just going to run out their time. Oh, there they go. Uh, how does Chalice on two feel? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. It's not great. I'm willing to mulligan this. We haven't been mulliganing a lot with this deck. Um, it does require a lot of pieces to get a fast start, but you do want to mulligan a lot with it. Similar to Big Red, you kind of just want to get a quick win. This is a turn one Blood Moon. Want... Yeah, we want the bridge or the Blood Moon, I think. So that's definitely the way blood to go. Blood Moon's not going to do a whole lot against them. I don't necessarily want to go lower, though. I think uh, I think it does something against them because like a lot of times they're attacking with Muta Ball and like it might it might do something to them. I think I don't believe I want the Spyglass if they lead on Vile. That's gonna feel bad, but this is gonna be a turn one Blood Moon. I'd prefer to see just a second land here. We're gonna empty most of our hand for a Blood Moon against the Mono Colored deck. Mm -hmm. uh, on the plus side, they do end up running a lot of like Cavern of Souls and a Boro mm -hmm. and. Just like a bunch of random yeah. non-choke cards. Yeah, there's a lot of utility lands, so 
I think I think it's definitely worth it. Is turn one Oblivion Ring on the Vial a better option now? Because that's going to really slow down the fast, the speed that they can do things, and they might be leaning on the Vial since they multi five, or I guess they multi yeah, six. Definitely with, definitely with. Uh, hmm. We do have Anger of the Gods also, which is sub then. I think I'd prefer to tax their mana here and actually just go after the Aether Vial. This is likely incorrect, but it does give us a better out of them getting mana. Oh, I guess I can't, because that only gives us red. Yep, Blood Moon it is. Blood Moon it is. And if we don't see some lands here, we might be in some pain. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right, so vial or the O-ring on the vial wouldn't have been as effective as I wanted it to be. Yeah, I think the early, like being able to cast anger of the gods, I think was more important than playing the blood moon, because uh, if you don't draw a land, I don't know, could be wrong. It's fine. I mean. We didn't necessarily have a strong 7. Going to 6 wasn't terrible, and we had a 3-drop on turn 1. We did what our deck wants to do, which again, very targeted hate doesn't always mean anything, especially against the mono blue vile deck. Mm -hmm. Modern is a pretty open format, and you kind of just have to take matchups when you're playing a mm -hmm. single axis strategy like this one. Basically just trying to draw into a ritual. Uh, I guess we wouldn't even have mana for it. We're essentially dead. Yeah, yeah we need a uh, red red source and a ritual. We're going to be taking six here, likely going to drop in a lord, so we'll be taking nine dead in two turns. If we see a lord, we're just scooping it up. Opponent, when you lose, that's how you concede. Just FYI. <laughs> Whatever. I'm sorry, that was probably in bad taste, but we just waited for like 12 minutes for him on his side only to decide that he was going to lose. It's perfectly reasonable. Perfectly reasonable. To see your win condition is a good reason enough. All right. Similar. I don't believe this hand does enough. I think I just want to go for a turn one ensnaring bridge if I can. I mean, I think I think this is okay. Like you, okay. We already both. That's we fine. did. Uh, this is looking significantly stronger, and I'm perfectly okay yeah, with the Chandra. Turn... Yeah, turn two bridge is better. I mean, we had turn two uh, Spyglass, which is pretty good because they're most likely gonna have Vile on turn one. They kept their seven, though. Yeah. Most likely going to have Vile on turn one. Do they? No turn one Vile? Peak? Okay, well, thank you for tapping down. I will definitely run out my bridge. I was thinking, because they showed a spell pierce, that they probably don't have interaction for the bridge here. But I'm definitely going to ritual into bridge. Oh, yeah, bridge. Yeah, clearly. I would have been fine taking a turn 3 ritual into Chandra, turn 4 bridge, but since they tapped down. Mm -hmm. Then we'll see if they have an echoing truth. They're going to have to build up a board state first, though, which is good for us. That'll give us time to tick up Chandra. Definitely should have saved that for the planes. <laughs> All right, so next turn, going to play the mountain, play Chandra, have two cards in hand. I would have assumed they took that out, but that's all right. Just 
So I'm ticking up Chandra, correct? Yeah. She'll Why die not? if I don't. Mm -hmm. But they'll be able to attack in for three. Without a vial, they can't do any shenanigans to get in with bridge and then buff the team. So that's at least a positive. I do actually think this is one of the few things that gives Merfolk a leg over spirits or humans. Basically gets around the vial on the other side of the table claws. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's good enough to pick Merfolk over one of the other ones, but it is part of their tech that actually does something. Yeah, it's really it's a really interesting card. I like that card a lot. Wow, they are looking for an out. Okay, what do we draw? Ritual. So I can look at the top card if it's a bridge or anchor I can cast and still empty hand. Mm -hmm. I do want to play my land first, though. Don't need to cast that. And they have to deal with the bridge. Yay, prison! <laughs> <laughs> they did draw two cards that turn. That's that's pretty good. They might have a something. I don't. I yeah, they have seven that. cards in hand. They've seen a third of their deck. Like, I, I'm not saying they don't have anything, but we are assembling what we need to here. It's unfortunate we didn't have a better card for a Merfolk matchup than Blood Moon, but we'll see if we can get these guys out of range of uh, Anger of the Gods and see if we can find one. Chandra will help with that. Well, second ensnaring bridge. They cast the Lord. I'm kind of okay just to run that out. Then that means that they actually have to have Echoing Truth. Mm -hmm. Something like Unsubstantiate won't cut it, or the new... Uh, I guess it's not that new. What was the split card that had a similar effect? Mm, I don't remember that one off the top of my head. I'm bad at that, though. Uh, I think it was actually one of the Amonkhet cards. Yeah, With probably. Aftermath. Let's see what opponent's up to. Absolutely nothing. Uh, what do I name here? Just Aether Vial? Yeah, I think that's the right one. Aether Vial is the right card. I mean, they could have something like Arcanist the Omnipotent to draw three cards, but that feels super fringe when this can actually name Aether Vial. And then I'm casting an Oblivion Ring here just because I want to run out my hand. I think I want to go after a Lord, just that if he has another one, then Anger of the Gods is still going to hit everything. Yeah, the Lord is a good idea. I'd be curious to see if Ixalan's Binding is a better choice here than uh, Oblivion Ring. What's four mana, right? It's four mana, but it prevents them from recasting a card with the same name. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting idea. This deck is perfectly okay going for the long game, and being a multiple answer in white feels pretty good. Uh, Chalice of Void here, mm -hmm. basically shutting off any future lords, spreading seas, yeah. echoing truth. Definitely. All of the all of the things in their deck. They had three vials out, and two of them were on two. Mm -hmm. 
Now they can't activate the vial and they can't cast anything for two. Again, this is opponent where you should probably be scooping. If you did have a sideboard out though, I can see you sticking it out. If I exile Elspeth, I'll be sad. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Did you cast it? I oh. did cast it. <laughs> oh. oh. I was like, I can just start naming random things, but I should have just done the two damage. It would have meant that I only had to cast two spells of Chandra. Another reason I probably should have kept the Sorcerer Spyglass in hand was so I could just one-shot him. The intent there was to go empty-handed, just that if they did have like a Vapor Snag or something along those lines, I wouldn't be attacked for two and make it so that she couldn't ult. Alright, Emblem's a pretty good one. Anger of the Gods a really good one. Mm -hmm. Take five damage and kill all your creatures. Thank you for playing. Seems pretty good, right? Yeah. Ah, did have the Venzer. Should have definitely bounced Chandra. Yeah. Don't know why you didn't bounce Chandra, opponent. That was like your one shot. Yeah. Good, good, uh, good, uh, yeah. Oh, he's gonna bounce bridge here. He can only bounce one bridge. Oh, it was countered. Duh. Wow, I'm kind of struggling. I guess I can't fault opponent for struggling. <laughs> He just recast it. Come on, opponent. Play out that second Venzer. Bounce it. Give us more spells. Alright, let's see what you can do. Yeah, Merfolk was my first deck. I didn't like the linear creature strategy. It just didn't really do what I wanted it to do. It didn't interact. It doesn't interact enough. Like uh, like the humans and the spirits deck. Cause the difference between the interaction is like you get a creature also with those other two decks. Where with uh, the like with fish, you have to play spells, and it just kind of works against each other because you have aether vial in the deck too. So it just feels feels bad. It's it's really tough. Yeah, I can agree with that. I still don't so think that play style is necessarily my play style. Spirits, you play cards that are interactive as a creature so that's why they're so good yeah spirits is a little bit closer you get to hold up the spell queller you get to like flash in the diagraph captain to make it to counter a kill spell but i still prefer like the control hold up counter spell set up your deck correctly can trip your way to the right card i'm a human's player so definitely might be biased oh i wasn't holding control for that last bit well the stream got it <laughs> <laughs> got the got what? Got the, I, I was basically oh. saying that none of those were really my play style. Like I kind of agree with spirits to a point, but I like can tripping my way to the correct card, controlling, trying to read the opponent, get the correct play out of it. I do really like the way that Gorio's As Foretold gives you some interaction and then gives you like one turn to just combo and kill them, and you're not just like, well, in like four turns you're gonna drown in Jace. All right, this is a turn three do something. Cares about creature matchups. I think this one fine. might be a mulligan. Nah, I think it's fine. But like we could have a turn one blood moon. Could. All right, I'll stick with this. Uh, just hope that they're not on a spell strategy. Plus, we can always top deck a ritual in two turns. And it's Dredge. Hello, main deck Anger of the Gods. Oh, look how thin and smart we are. <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. So, check lands are kind of... Really, opponent? 
Uh, check lands are really good in strategies where you need to have four mana. Uh, so fast lands end up getting a lot of attention in modern, similar to this Copper Line Gordon Dredge, because everything they want to do is less than three mana. But in our deck, when we want to play Chandra's, like Clifftop Retreat does a lot of what we want it to, and any land's going to make that come in untapped. And Well, it's going to come in untapped under Blood Moon anyway. With the new Blood, blood, blood Moon uh, change. Yep, it always takes me a second to be like, oh yeah, that changed. Which is really nice. It's a, it was a smart update. It's more logical than the other way. It way. is. Layers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I believe it's correct here to anger away the four damage, isn't it? Yeah, getting rid of prize amount of is worth it. Chalice doesn't do much in this matchup. Uh, you can Chalice on two at a certain point of the game, but I think getting rid of the four damage when they're loaming life from the loam, or dredging life from the loam, is probably the most correct play here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we could take one. I don't know. I don't really want to take four. They're going to have two more creeping chills in the deck and conflagrate. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. Yeah. I'm just thinking of a of an out on, in my head if there was a better play, but I don't think there is. I think getting rid of the... You see, they just dredged the conflagrate, so we're at a virtual 8 with two creeping chills in the deck and probably another conflagrate. They can kill us just as is. Hey, look, another conflagrate. So they can loam, go up to 9, hit us for 9, then loam two turns, so we're actually going to have to draw a ley line here. On the plus side, though, we get rips, we get ley lines, we get ensnaring bridges, they get ancient grudge, but we also get blood moon, and that shuts off a decent chunk of their deck. Yeah, they have a pretty, pretty greedy mana, mana base. Uh, blood moon here actually probably wouldn't be a terrible draw because it'd mean that they can't loam again. Yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. Is the converted mana cost of Conflagrate 1? Where? So, when they cast it from the graveyard, they're playing the flash, flashback cost of 2, but I'm pretty sure the CMC of the so card is still 1. So, anywhere but on the stack, it is 1. Anywhere on the, If it's on the stack, it considers the converted mana cost with X involved. So, Chalice on 1 should actually stop Conflagrate here, so that's actually going to save us a ton of life. Which means they actually are going to have to hit a two creeping chills off their dredge as well as blood gas to make this a game. I do like this deck. I, I don't like that opponents don't know when to scoop to it, but I do like this deck. It has a lot of fun and interesting lines and ways to like make sure your opponent is correctly building a deck. Like right here, it was probably correct to run out and snaring bridge if they didn't already have two conflagrates in the graveyard. What is he casting here for two? I think he's trying to conflagrate. Just discard some cards. I don't know if he knows it'll get countered or not, but he's definitely trying to get the uh, Stinkweed back into the graveyard. Nope, that did hit us. Interesting. So it's on the stack, that's why. Okay, so he's going to dredge loam. If he hits a creeping chill, we're just dead. Uh, I think I'm just going to run out Chandra here. You, you understand why that hit you? Because it's on the stack that it counts it. It doesn't counter it until it's on the stack. He was casting it from the graveyard, though. But Correct. This is kind of going but to the uh, counterbalance Green Sun Zenith ruling, isn't it? Just Yeah, just read Shadows of the Void. Like, it counters it on the stack. 
doesn't stop it, prevent it from being cast. Otherwise, you can't cast spells and have it be countered. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't get cards out of your hand. So, Ensnaring Bridge was the correct play last turn. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, we have one turn to see Leyline. Dredge's life from the loam, picks it up. The wording on Creeping Chill is each opponent. Yep. That's damage each opponent. So it's actually correct for him to conflagrate here. So Chalice for two should actually stop the conflagrate as well, shouldn't it? No, because it's going to count X, so whatever X is. It doesn't count X, though, because it's not X when casting from the graveyard. It's red-red, and then additional cost of X cards. I'm just going to take this as a learning. Uh, we're significantly favored against them in the post-board matchup, so I'm okay to lose game one. Yeah, it's fine. And learn a lesson about casting cards from other zones with Chalice of the Void. It's weird to do the counter. Hmm. So one. when they cast it from the graveyard, I would have assumed it was the card CMC, not the spell CMC. But because it was a spell CMC, that makes sense. If it's spell CMC, though, the two here should make it uncounterable. And it also means that they can't life from the low. It's, it never considers the cost, like the alternate casting costs. Like, it's always the cost up on the top with it. That's that's really weird, because you get to pay, pay X when you, when you flash it back. All right, oh, so they actually showed us a Bloodgast here. Um, I'm going to run out the Ensnaring Bridge and probably just the Outpost Siege so that I have more opportunity to see things. It'll make Chandra worse, but we'll end up seeing two cards next turn anyway. I just don't want to get attacked by the blood gas in case they do see one of their uh, creeping chills off of the stinky dimp. Mm -hmm. For those of you unfamiliar with dredge, what this deck does is instead of drawing, they dredge the number. So they take from the top of the library and drop into the graveyard, whatever the dredge number is. Stinky dimp is currently the highest dredge in the deck, and it dredges five. Whenever you flip over a Creeping Chill, it deals three damage to each opponent and you gain three life. That's how we got hit so low, was the first cards that they drew were Creeping Chills. They could also just have a Creeping Chill in hand. But uh, Bloodgast here says Landfall. Whenever a land enters, it can enter the battlefield. And it has haste as long as an opponent has ten or less life. So this could attack us unless we got below two cards with this Ensnaring Bridge. So more or less just trying to cover some bases to not get killed here. It's possible that they try to conflagrate us. Not sure if that's going to kill us yet. They do have five cards in hand. We'll see. Um, but they essentially, right now, they're only out to kill us as two creeping chills. Okay, I think that's bugged. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. That doesn't seem right. I All think right. it's one. well. Leyline of Sanctity probably isn't going to be correct, but I'm going to set it over here as a consideration because this does stop Conflagrate, which is some of their highest burst damage. Rest in Peace just removes their graveyard, makes it a pretty easy game for us. Uh, Blood Moon's fantastic. O-Ring's not going to do a whole lot. Elspeth is just going to be hard to cast and not really kill anything in their deck. Chalice doesn't seem great either because they don't cast most of their spells. Yeah, it seems he's one. So if they flash it back, it should be CMC one. So the first one should have countered it. If they actually use the X cost, then it would be the other way around. So it was right. It should have been countered the first time. I would have thought it would have been countered the first time. That's why I ended up making that play to go that way. Um, again, I'm fine to lose that and learn a lesson. Um, very worst case, there is always comp for MTGO if there is a bug. So I can figure out what that is and actually follow up on it. 
Uh, so Shriekhorn is one of their artifacts. I don't think I care enough about that. They're definitely bringing in Ancient Grudge. That should be able to hit the Ensnaring Bridge. You can't Spyglass Ancient Grudge, right? It's, it's a cast from a graveyard, not an activated ability to flash back. Ancient Grudge. Let's look it up. How much time do you have? Minute four. I don't believe it works that way, but I am willing to ask it's since a, it's, it's not. It's an alternate casting cost. Yep, that's what I thought. Pretty sure. I think this is about as good as it's going to get. I do want the ley lines over the chalices, I think, in this matchup, so I'll go ahead and ship this back. Ship it back. Sounds good to me. This hand is quite terrible. Gemstone Caverns is only good on the draw. We are opting into the play with this deck, unlike with Narset Cannon. Oh, boy. Yep, it is definitely a alternate casting cost. This is a turn three Chandra. I don't really want to go much lower than this. This is probably going to be a loss for that reason, but we can give it a shot. Chalice will stop Faithless Looting. Yeah. So there's an older post on, weirdly enough, GitHub about Chalice and Conflagrate. It says two can never counter it, but one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven can, obviously. Um, so yeah, one should have done it. And they haven't updated anything for that since 2016 so that is i was absolutely correct they, i guess they did update the converted mana costs on cards for split cards but that's it that's the only thing they did now you're forgetting to press alt or shift oh i wasn't talking oh okay yeah I was trying to do my own research, which required reading and playing and listening to you, so I wasn't talking. <laughs> no, I, I was absolutely right. Like, the, the CMC of the card is... It's one everywhere besides the stack. If they choose to pay the X cost, then it would be the X. It'd be one plus whatever the X is. So the X costs. So that's how that works. So it's clearly a bug for uh, MTGO. All right, well, if we take one of these games, given what I'm seeing in this game, probably not this game, but if we do still a game here, uh, I would count this as a win. Like, mm -hmm. the deck should have actually performed that way, but it didn't. Absolutely agree with that. <sighs> Looks like the opponent's kind of low on... Low on uh, mana here. He hasn't played a la another land yet. Uh, opponents also to... tanking pretty hard. Yeah, they. Probably... It's also kind of correct in dredge to actually dredge first in case you hit a blood gas to bring back with your land drop. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually reading an Ask the Judge from 2006 on Star City Games, and they're saying that the mana cost for Conflagrate is always twice the chosen value of X. And... The flashback cost is only two mana, but the converted mana cost of the spell will be twice X. No, that's incorrect. But, like, the flashback on Conflagrate isn't actually X in the mana cost, it's X cards, which means the converted mana cost should be two. Should be one. Should always, because it's, it's one. Because uh, X, X equals zero when you're just looking at the card. Like, in its hand, its converted mana cost would be one in the hand. Like, if you were, say, some card that took uh, a card out of their hand equal to the converted mana cost of one, hypothetically. I don't know if there's a card that does that. You could take Conflagrate because its mana cost is its CMC is one. Right, the card is converted mana cost one, but the spell would be whatever X is. Yeah, and they're not paying for X, right? When they flash it back? Um, 
Yeah, it doesn't look like it. It just says discard X cards. Correct. So you're, so the converted mana cast would be the same because you're not paying for X. All right, well, I'm not trying to get stuck up on the first game. What's actually the correct play here? Oh, so I can plus Chandra. I'm not going to be able to do anything with her, but it might have been correct to play Outpost Siege this turn. Just take the five. Am I supposed to kill the prize amalgam knowing it's coming back, but save... I mean, Chandra's going to die anyway. Let's just go up. Yeah, I would go up. Get a card. If I saw an Anger of the Gods there, I'd feel really bad, but... Maybe it was wrong to go up. Maybe you should have killed the prize just to save some damage, because you knew it was going to die either way. Yeah, if they go after me, though, I kind of don't care, and they're going to kill Chandra regardless, because I'd kill the prize amalgam, and then Blood Gas would kill Chandra. And then they'd just make a land drop, pull back the one in their bin, and then get the prize amalgam back. So it's going to net the same amount of damage, but they actually have to commit both creatures to Chandra here. Mm -hmm. Either that, or they're going to conflagrate Chandra and hit me for five. Looks like it's Cathartic Reunion. And they had another one. Ray of Revelation. Interesting. They actually were going after enchantments as well. Yeah, this one might have just been Mole for Rip. If I had ripped, it'd probably be a pretty easy match. Especially if their enchantment hate is actually a flashback cost to cast it. Definitely. We can still draw a rip here. I could. If I draw a rip, uh, I'm looking at seven damage on the table. Mm-hmm. Going after Chandra as expected. So running out outpost each here doesn't have much value. They're just going to rave revelation it. Uh, Blood Moon first does make a lot of sense though. Mm -hmm. Then Gemstone Caverns is actually legendary. So I'm going to save this. Oh, yeah, they have the rave revelation. Well, whatever. Uh, I'm going to save this. It'll tap for a mana next turn. I'll legend rule it, keep the new one, and then be able to cast the outpost siege. Yeah, it's totally okay with them killing the blood, with the blood moon. Like, now we can play the outpost siege and then uh, possibly draw two cards. I mean, draw two cards. We'll turns. be dead on board before outpost siege triggers. We'll end up needing to draw anger of the gods here to do anything. Uh, yeah, you're right. Never mind. They also have conflagrate for seven, so... GG, opponent. GG. Pretty close to it. Anger of the Gods or Bust, right? Yep, Anger of the Gods, and then uh, they can't ever draw a Loam or another Conflagrate. Oh, they already have both Conflagrates, so they just wouldn't be able to draw a Loam. I don't know. I think this is completely winnable, especially post-board. Uh, if we knew how the Chalice interacted in game one, we probably would have taken one of two post-board games. Oh yeah, definitely. It was just bad luck. Yeah, Dredge is very much a game one deck, and we just got a little unlucky there. Oh, uh, this judge question is actually just asking about flashback on a chalice on two, which completely makes sense. That would not work that way, because the cost of the card is one. Oh, okay, I actually get it. So they are going off the converted mana cost of the spell on the stack. So when you're discarding X, it's actually one plus two X. So if they discard one card, the converted mana cost is three on the flashback, despite the fact that the flashback doesn't show X in the ca casting cost. 
because you still pay because you're while you're casting you decide how many cards you're discarding right so it is an alternate cast but the x is still actually attributed up here even though most of the time x means zero in alternate casts it's going towards the co cast blah, 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 the cost of the spell I can see what you mean. That actually makes a ton of sense. And we have not seen a... Oh, I am actually going to have to run out this gemstone caverns. We haven't seen a... Oh, there is an ancient grudge. Never mind. GG's opponent. Mm -hmm. I still think that's completely winnable, but... I'll call that misplays on my part. All right, looks like opponent won the die roll. And we have a turn one Blood Moon or Ensnaring Bridge. I'm quite happy with this. Mm -hmm. Seems good to me. I think Blood Moon's probably more impactful across the board. Depends on what we see here. Uh, turn one Blood Moon is pretty backbreaking, especially if they're just on one basic. Mm -hmm. If they run out of fetch land, definitely going to slam it. If they end up playing a basic land, like maybe basic planes is the only one that would make me consider not doing it. If we get discarded here, that'll be sad. <laughs> yeah, it's very possible. Oh, yeah. What are the odds I get stubborn denied and feel super bad? I don't think you will. There's... Okay, that was weird. So this could be one of two decks. This could be either Death Shadow or uh, Living End, right? This could be Living End. Uh, this could also be Death Shadow. This could also be Traversive Abzan. This could also be... Um... Mm -hmm. It's not... Well, given Polluted Delta, it's pretty much... Death Shadow. Yeah, yeah. Wonder whether they didn't crack their fetch line there. Like go get the off. Yeah, the so they're almost assuredly Death Shadow or possibly some type of Grixis Delver. Yeah, they should have went and got their black right now. Okay, so I'm on the assumption that they are Death Shadow, which means I want ley lines for the discard. Definitely. Rest in peace is very good if they're on the fish plan, which more than likely they are. Mm -hmm. uh, Stony Silence can interrupt if we're on the play. I don't think that's worth it. Spyglass is also a little intriguing, given the fact that they're on all fetch land plan. Like, taking away a third of their lands is all right, but Blood Moon's just going to be a stronger bet. Yeah, I think that's good. So what are we taking out for the cards we have? For this? So Elspeth killing fish is actually insanely relevant in this matchup. Chandra not killing fish is insanely bad. I don't want to cut more than her, though. I like having two minimum in the deck. Mm -hmm. Although getting rid of the non-SECC promo. <laughs> uh, not really a fan of O-Ring. It gets stubborn denied, and their tempo deck as it is anyway. Yeah, definitely. Bridge is quite good, especially if they're on Grixis. means that they're not running Ancient Grudge. They have to be on a Braid. Chalice is interesting. It's really good against their one-drops, but not against their high game plan. I think it's good because it keeps them off of all their cantrips and all those other things to try to find spells. I don't think we want a Johnny. Um, no, I don't think a Johnny's good enough. I still like Outpost Siege, just drawing the additional cards, especially because most decks can't interact with enchantments. If it turns out that they have Assassin's Trophy, that'll feel bad, but it is what it is. Anger of the Gods also loses a ton of value. It actually just might be the three Anger of the Gods. Yeah. yeah. Chandra or Johnny? 
Johnny can at least keep a 5-5 tap down. Can Lightning Helix for a little bit of shock health against the Death Shadow? No, I think... I think... Uh, I guess you could kill a Death Shadow with with the Johnny. But I, no, you can't. No, 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 no. I think this is about as good as it's going to get. Yeah. It's interesting seeing the Death Shadow down in the 2-2 bracket. Maybe they have some spice that they're trying out. Alright, so this is a turn one rip. Turn two Chandra if we draw her. I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leyline is also just really good to get out there. It makes it set the discard is ineffective. Thoughtseize has to hit themselves if they want to lose the additional life that quickly. Yeah, definitely. If we draw a ritual, we can actually rip and chalice. Yep. Oh, sorry. For some reason, I thought I had um, the gemstone caverns. So, chalice is going to be better here, isn't it? Yeah, turn one chalice is definitely better. This is worse to get Stubborn Denial, but Stubborn Denial on this means that Rip's coming out. Mm -hmm. hmm, no Stubs, but confirmed Grixis. Mm -hmm. So potentially a turn to a Braid. So I, I want to keep the Chalice here. Uh, Chalice on two does almost nothing against their deck, but if they do happen to destroy it or have like an Echoing Truth or something, like it just this is better off in hand. Oh yeah, keeping it in your hand is right. So uh, Rip here is way better than Chalice. And it's not like he was going to get Summer Denialed. It possibly could have been negated, although I think they run Dispel on the sideboard. They care more about their tempo plan than getting rid of problem permanence. Definitely. Uh, the fact that they didn't shock that in means that they might be off the plan of Death Shadow. It's possible, yeah. And that means they're like, uh, like counting. Oh, which... they have a K command. Okay, sure. It's fine. We have another. Like, we have another chalice. To... Yeah, we'll happily discard Elspeth. Nothing's going to happen fast enough that we care about here. Mm -hmm. We're just running out Snapcaster. All right, that works. Perfect. So, confirm Grixis Death Shadow at this point. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. Really confused on why they don't have K Command here. I thought that was, a uh, like, two to three of in this deck. Yeah, that... He commands really important. That card's so good. <laughs> Especially with Snapcaster. But, like, Chalice on one is stopping the Thought Scours. Uh, Leylands are stopping the discards. This is stopping Bolt, stopping Stubborn Denial, Death Shadow. It's basically leaving them with Fish, Dismember, Battle Rage, and K Command. It's very much possible that like they have like six one drop cards in their hand like very easily. It is. Uh, it looks like their sideboard actually might be EE, -E, which mm -hmm. fun enough for anybody who's unaware, you can't chalice EE -E because it can pay any number. It only cares about number of colors put on it, and they can literally do zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm happy to hang on to this rip in case I see a K command. Um, EE -E is definitely making me think like I don't want to run out the additional chalice. Surgical's out. It's basically just K Command and possibly Lily Last Hope, I think I care about. Mm -hmm. Like racing a Lily Last Hope would be Bane without a bridge, so. Yeah, but by the time that she comes out, she comes out with three loyalty, has to get up to seven. Like, we would see a bridge or at least. Something. Hey, they did have a basic. 
Oh, that's why they didn't fetch it out. They had a blunt state mire, and they have a basic island. Okay. On two? Ooh, not double red. Yeah, I just realized that. Huh. All right. <laughs> so, instep going to blow the EE. -E. Next turn, I'm playing a rip. I might actually see a fish, though. If he ends up having a ton of one drops in hand, he can just run them out to get countered. Oh, but he can't blow the EE -E and play the rip. So, that should be fun. Am I actually running out the chalice? No, not yet, I don't think. It makes better use of my mana. What do you mean? Uh, he can't multi-spell anyway if he's blown the EE, so that's fine. Yeah, it's interesting that this deck doesn't have double red at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever been in that situation. I'm always wanting my planes. Now I'm running out of Chalice. Wait, does he have V-Click? Guess not. Hey, for once our motto isn't let's draw a walker, it's let's draw a land. <laughs> oh, we're going to get a tap land just because of that. <laughs> probably, probably going to get a tap land. Okay, so got the ritual here. I think that's enough to want to run out Chandra. Chandra, or can we ritual into uh, Elspeth? We're one turn away from Elspeth. Would it be better to run out Elspeth and just wait for one more land? We have six turns with the Snapcaster Mage. Potentially five if they do actually have the K command. Can't we do Elspeth? Am I thinking this wrong? We have four you mana. You get three mana. So you pay two, get three mana. Oh, that's only five. Okay, never mind. So what I can actually do is play Chandra here and then tap her for double red, or get double red out of her next turn. So I think Chandra is actually the correct play. Yeah, that's right. You're absolutely right. And then I'm plussing her on the off chance that they have a... Um, Another Snapcaster Mage. I don't want to nuke this and then just get attacked in by the Snappy. That makes sense. Uh, also, a pretty good reason they didn't blow the EE is because the Snapcaster was their clock. So now they're going to be more inclined to pop this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought about that a minute ago, that they might not want to blow it up because of that. There's the EE, didn't even want to get the damage in, which means they probably don't have the K commander. They would have K commanded there. Mm -hmm. If they were planning on fishing off the two cards from Thought Scour, that was definitely a mistake. Because they're going to. Yeah, they wouldn't be able to cast fish this turn. Redundant Chandra is nice. I got a plus over here first. Oh, so you're playing Rip instead? Um, I wanted to Rip, but seeing that Blood Moon has changed my mind a bit. I think yeah, I want a Blood Moon. Black. Yeah, it definitely cuts him off black. Also gives us our double red for the other Chandra. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if the plan is fish here, like, they're just in trouble. Yeah, definitely. Mm. 
All right, so I have five mana, technically seven. I think I just want to rip, but I'm going to see what Chandra reveals first. Hey, look at Did that. We can do it all. Okay. Oh, no, we can't. Uh, we can Elspeth, though. Yeah, I think Elspeth is a relevant thing to do right now. Well, now they have to have Battle Rage to even be able to get in. This should be a concession. Because next turn we're gonna Chandra's ultimate. Oh, or yeah, opponent just does that. Kill him. Yeah, I was gonna run out Chalice on zero, but figured that might be a little painful. Well, cash to the league with Sun and Moon, uh, playing Assemble yeah. the Legion. I feel like I have to point that out. So, Tony, what did you think of Sun and Moon Prison? It was fun. Sun and Moon is a very good deck. It's, uh, I think uh, if I if I had the cards, I'd definitely put it together. If I wanted to win a tournament, I think it could very much uh, get you very far in, into a tournament. So it's got a good angle of attack with... With Incinerating Bridge and Blood Moon, I think that hits a lot of the decks in the format. Excuse me. I do feel like a lot of people have been touched inappropriately by Blood Moon lately and Field of Ruin. They're running a lot more basics than I'm used to seeing, but a turn one Blood Moon is still something that most people aren't prepped for. Definitely, definitely. Chalice is another good card. Like It's not as great as it used to be, but... It still can like shut off that like it, it won the game that last game like Chalice on one. I do think that Chalice is a lot more relevant now that Phoenix is trying to get into the format. It's very common for opponents to be like Manamorphose into two one mana spells. Well, if those two one mana spells get countered, you get a Phoenix unless it's Faithless Looting to put it into the bin. But it does stop a little bit of that unfair strategy there. Uh, I know I played against an opponent running a Mentor Phoenix deck, Thing in the Ice Phoenix deck, uh, just Burn Phoenix decks. Like everybody's trying to make that happen, and it's a lot harder if you can't cast your one drops. Definitely, definitely a lot harder. But uh, yeah, it was sweet. Yeah, I mean, it does some fun things. Chandra is just a fantastic card. Elspeth has always been a powerhouse. It hits a lot of sideboards and white decks for, like, the Jund matchups. When it gets super grindy, she just hits the table and wins the game. Uh, she's a little hard to cast through the Blood Moon, and you get into top deck wars. Uh, I do appreciate you guest starring because, as I mentioned before, like, this is just a lot of sitting around waiting for your opponent to actually have it click. I don't have an out to this. I know when I first started playing Magic, I didn't ever necessarily think, like, what do I have that answers that? I'm like, what's on the top of my deck? And that mentality needs to change a little bit when you're playing this deck. And I know some people struggle with it. Mm, you know what I mean? A lot of people, and there, there's the other side of the coin, people who've been playing for a while also, like, stay in a match longer than they need to just because they know that this person is, like, playing a, a long term, like, a long game plan deck. And so they just want to, like, see what they're playing and kind of so they know the better for the next game what they're what they're playing against better uh better strategize yeah and typically anytime i've tried to play a slow deck i've actually seen opponents actually message me and be like dude if you just tell me your win condition so i can board for it i'm happy to concede here and most of our opponents were falling behind on uh, clock like our merfolk opponent was like 10 minutes behind us and it wasn't like he was doing anything impactful or felt like he was necessarily slow playing he just didn't know when he needed to concede because it was just over and we didn't have a win condition yet who knows who knows what his thought process are it could have been just like him just being a jerk he was just being salty oh yeah that and that's fair there's a lot of there's a lot of people who are salty against Bridge and Blood Moon and those kind of things. Like they bring out a lot of like salt in people. So. Yep, and that is definitely a mentality. If you are wanting to buy into this, you do become that player. Uh, it's a ton of fun from your side. It really makes your opponent's deck do something out of what it was built to do, which is great in modern. Like, especially that Death Shadow deck. Like, they have a very tempo game plan. I'm gonna drop something cheap and play it fast. And when we took that option away, the deck kind of stumbled. And it's a powerhouse. It's not like it's a bad deck, but it's not built in a way to attack on multiple axes. So you just steal those wins. Oh yeah, this deck, like, when, when Death Shadow was, like, 
considered one of the best decks in the format. Like, uh, this deck just destroys that deck, I feel like. Oh, it does. I didn't even have the chalices, but it was just like, I'm going to Blood Moon early. I'm going to land a Chandra that can take out an early Death Shadow. Mm -hmm. If you go low on life, I'm going to Lightning Bolt or Helix your face, and you're going to be close to dying with the Chandra's plus. Like, it's just, yeah. it's backbreaking. Like, if you only do one thing, if you only do KCI, Stony Silence stops you. If you only do Graveyard, Rip stops you. Like, there's just so many answers. You you spoke the name of the deck that should not be named, and I'm glad it's banned. You might bring it back. <laughs> uh, I saw a post on Reddit today calling it Third Breakfast, trying to figure out how to rebuild since the banning. Like, they're going to try. It, that attracts a certain player, but that's a little out of the scope of this deck. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But yeah, right, if you're well, willing to deal with the mentality that you are the prison player and somebody might sigh when they play against you because they don't understand when they've lost, like this is a ton of fun and I'd highly recommend playing it. Um, it definitely has power. I did tag this as competitive. We did cash out. Like this does fun things at competitive prices. Not really. I mean, it's a six hundred and fifty dollar deck and paper, but I mean, these have a lot of uses, and you can end up going multiple colors with a Tezzeret. Like, this is the stock for a lot of decks that do similar game plans. So if you like this, go for it. Yeah, definitely. This deck is sweet. It's a very good deck. I mean, like, And I think it has a lot of like longevity. Like, if you're worried about getting into modern and having a deck that will die when the meta changes, like, this attacks in a way that will always be relevant if that makes sense oh yeah and you can always rebuild into like free win red you can rebuild into tesserator like chalice and bridge aren't going anywhere they might not be overly strong at the moment but they're not going anywhere and like the fun of a assembled legion is just goes to show you like if you just want to jam a fun casual card in it you can that thing won us two games tonight yeah it's a legit win condition so yeah definitely all right. Well, uh, thanks for guest starring, Tony. And uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Yeah. Thanks, 13. Appreciate you inviting me. Woo. All right. Well, have a good one.